friends, thanks for tuning in today. I got this idea for this video I was thinking about, just the little things that really will enhance a makeup look, the things that I might do one day, but not another day, and then as a result of those things, I'll see my look maybe later in the day in the mirror, or I'll just have a thought about it, and I'll think, why is the look better today than it was that day? And when you're one who reviews makeup for a living, these are natural thoughts that happen, but I've kind of come to realize there are some little steps that if I take them, the look will turn out better. And by better, I just mean cleaner, more perfected, fresher looking, all these different elements will contribute something slightly different. But one word that kind of grabs everything would be elevated. So I thought I would do a full face and along the way really point out some of these things. These small steps that you can take and I feel like they're pretty universal so regardless of what kind of skin type you're dealing with, skin tone, these could make a difference for you. Okay so getting started my primer isn't particularly one of these recommendations. I'm just using my Lumi Glotion in the shade Light Glow. My primer and foundation you know just use them whatever I want. They are not one of the tips in particular and it's kind of interesting because I think big elements of makeup. People think, oh, foundation is really important. Well, I've kind of found that there's a couple of other kind of periphery steps that are maybe even more important. So I popped on this primer, got a little glow to the skin. Today I just grabbed my Wet n Wild Photo Focus in Soft Beige. This is just the original, I guess the matte, um, version of this stuff. and I'm gonna, as we say, frost the cake here with this little spatula that they give us. I do love this foundation. Love, love, love. And then we're just gonna blend that in. I'm using my e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush. So we're still at the do what you want phase, okay? Use what primer you like. Use what foundation you think looks good on you. roughed up my brow over here as I was blending that out, but it blends out really nicely with a sponge or a brush. I always like that about that foundation. Um, and I feel like the primer underneath gives just a little added glow, but the overall feel and finish of the skin won't be too tacky. So that's a place I like to be in. But again, not a key tip to the look. One thing that I think is kind of a key is using a corrector of some sort. Now I love my Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick in Bisque. This is also sold in a little pot version. Another one that I love is the Smashbox and Becca um, Brightening Under Eye Corrector, Pixie Correction Concentrate and Brightening Peach. There are various peachy correctors and you know you might look at the skin now and think well everything looks pretty well covered. I just go in with a little concealer and a lot of times I do but maybe it's just my age. Maybe it's what happens to like the contours and the little divots in your face that start to happen over time but I do feel like as I see myself throughout the day in different light, in different circumstances. When I've put on the corrector, it actually does make a difference. So for me, it might be playing with the light a little bit. For other people, it might be really, truly counteracting a very dark spot on the skin. Whatever your motivation, I do feel like it does something. So I go in here to this darkest place, or kind of right down in here, you know, under the eye. So I hit that, and I hit the outer most corner. And it's just really worth doing. Like it makes a difference. And then I can take my same blending brush and I can just work that around a little bit. The shade is just perfect. This bisque color. I mean if you really want to make a good difference with your corrector, getting the right tone for your skin is important. And I just, I love that bisque shade and it doesn't take a lot and then you know I can dab on a little bit of some skin tone concealer with it and be so good to go. Okay see where we're at now looking really good kind of brightened up in some of those places and then I can just take a smidge of something like e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer I wear this in light peach continue on with the look do a little dot here like a little dot a little dot out here and then proceed to use that in other places where I like to conceal like around the nose and the chin. And I really love using this brush to kind of spread the concealer. So take that one dot, turn it into a broader surface area. Same here. And then use your fluffier end to really get that all blended out, okay? Really nice looking under eye now. Spreading moving it around the larger surface area, and dabbing in. I feel like taking that step 
to move the product around a little bit first kind of prevents the brush from just like eating up that dot of product the larger part of the brush. But yeah, the game-changing step there, I believe, is the corrector. I think it makes a difference in just the brightness of that area. I think it might offer a little more longevity throughout the day and just makes more hollow-looking places seem a little more pulled forward. Here's another key for me, okay? It's using a setting powder and doing it with the puff, making sure to really set that under eye area. For me, it makes a big difference. And I've also come around on a certain kind of powder that's Makeup Forever Loose Powder. I like many loose powders, let me say that, but I at one point thought this was unworkable for me, and I think maybe I was using it with a brush and not getting it worked into the skin well enough. I'm not sure, but now I'm actually quite a fan. I think this wears beautifully. I wear it in 1.0 Vanilla, the Ultra HD Setting Powder. It's also got really nice packaging here with the stopper cap. Other ones that I like, Maybelline Fit Me, Wet n Wild Photo Focus, the e.l.f. Halo Glow in the Light Pink Shade, Laura Mercier's newer Blurring Powder. Um, there are just so many that have worked out nicely, but it's powdering at this point in time, but also very deliberately coming back in with powder at the end of the look as a true setting powder. Both of those steps make the skin look much more flawless, at least my skin. Now, if you've got skin who's like sitting around thinking, I can't take that, I can't use that powder, I can't put anything extra on here. I understand and you know your skin better than I know your skin. But I will say there are some products, some powders that are working so much better for me with the use of the puff, like getting a little bit in this cap and then kind of dabbing it around here. It creates amazing staying power for me, and I feel the area stays looking fresh and brightened all day, not thick. Now, I am feeling currently very well moisturized. My concealer was hydrating, and then I come in with this, and it's like the under eye accepts it, and it will look so smooth and so like doll skin vibes all day. And it's not just this powder that's the magic trick. It's a combination of using powder in this manner with some kind of actual powder puff. And I'll go on and I'll set my entire T-zone that way. And then come in and dust away any excess. But the act of really deliberately powdering and pressing into those areas, I mean, it wears really well. You can keep it as minimal as you want. Um, I can get away with a decent amount, but if you feel like you can only do a little, that's fine. And then you come in with a brush. This is my Morphe Under Eye Bullet Brush. And I kind of graze it over everywhere I just worked with. Any excess gets either dusted away, pressed back into the skin, and the surface of the skin ends up looking so beautiful. So the biggest tips so far, the biggest takeaways have been corrector and really deliberately setting the under eye with a puff with a powder of your choice. Next up I'm just going to apply my bronzer. I don't have a certain like tip to go along with this. I'm going to use my Persona Stick bronzer today. This is in the shade Sahara. It's the bronze multi-stick. I've been kind of raving on the blushes so I guess it made me think about the bronzer. This works really well. Um, I feel it maybe doesn't blend white with the smoothness of the M Cosmetics sticks, but still really good, like no real complaints on this, and the tone is super nice. That was a kitten opening the door. Somebody at one point in the video said, was that a ghost or a kitten? Well, this time of year, maybe it could be a ghost. See how well that works in, how natural that looks? I think there are multiple tones in this. Really, really happy with the way that looks. It, it just looks so perfect around the hairline, hollows of the cheek. Love it. Here's another key tip. I did this the other day, and I'm kind of embarrassed that I've been using makeup this long and haven't really on purpose thought about this and why this is so effective. Like in doing some monochromatic looks, I'm sure it's happened, but it hasn't necessarily happened because I thought this is just a really good choice to be making makeup wise. It's keeping your blush and your lip kind of on the same page color wise. Um, you know, your eye could be doing whatever. Let's just say it's a basic neutral eye. When it comes to choosing that blush and that lip color, making them very similar in tone or in color family, I think makes the look so much more pulled together 
together. The other day I was kind of touching up and I chose a different lip color that really aligned much more with the blush that I'd used that day. And I thought it took the look from so-so to really looking good. So I think that's one simple thing you can do. Some days maybe it's a more colorful eye and you have to perhaps be a bit more careful about the blush or the lip choice. But let's say it's just gonna be a neutral eye and I'm thinking, okay, I wanna go for this kind of like peachy, corally looking blush. This is the from LYS. This is from their holiday kit that I'm currently testing. It's their higher standard satin matte cream blush in the shade Unforgettable. So I'm going to apply some of this. It's going to give me a really pretty kind of like rosy coral thing going on on the cheeks. It's so nice. I have one of these already in the full size and I like it. And so far I'm enjoying um, these little travel size ones. And they'll be easier to store than the full size triangle. That's the thing. They make their products in these triangular shaped um, compacts and they can be hard to put away. So look at that beautiful color we've got going there, like a pretty and really even flush just going in with my brush. You could swipe some color on the cheeks, but I just feel like this makes it immediately diffused. I really like the Sephora 56. Actually, the same size of brush head that I used to blend in that bronzer is just a different brush. This is my little, like, sample size brush. Same brush head, just a shorter handle. Okay, so you got this beautiful thing happening here with your blush. And then consider taking a lip color that's gonna fall in line with that somewhat. I swatched out my decision here, I guess. This is my blush swatched, and this is my lip color that I'm gonna use. So the lip colors may be a little deeper, but they're kind of in the same ballpark. I pulled out this Maybelline um, Ulta Matte lip color in the shade More Blaze. And I know this is kind of early for putting the lip color on in, in the scope of my looks, but I want you to see. Can you see how these tones are kind of coordinated and how flattering it does look coming together there? With the eye not even done yet, it looks nice. Um, then I'm just gonna highlight real quick. I'm gonna use some cookie from my Cheek the Mail palette, which is an absolute love. If you haven't seen the video on it, please check it out. I'm just getting some of that highlight lightly on my Real Techniques setting brush and getting it all blended in there for a little brightness. A little can come up here. Remember, we don't just want the cheek surface of the skin to look like it's got a glow. We can have the glow everywhere. And a little on the cupid's bow. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to move on to the brows now, just using my e.l.f. Uh, Ultra Precise Brow Pencil in Neutral Brown. This is not a specific tip, but, you know, just doing the brows. Filled in, and then utilize that spoolie just to rake it on through and make sure that product is in there really evenly. I'm feeling kind of down to business in this video. Anytime I got a post-it note with bullet points on it, it really keeps me on task. I do have parent-teacher conferences tonight though, both of them back to back. My girls really seem to lock out every year in the teacher department. Like there's just some really phenomenal teachers out there. I really appreciate the connections and the bonds that they've been able to form with their teachers. Okay, um, this step, you know, I always will throw in some kind of a gel here. NYX Control Freak I love so much. My key tip is actually going to pertain to touching up. Have you ever really thought to touch up the brows? Because the other day I did and I didn't realize what a difference it would make. Now, I didn't start the day with NYX Control Freak on that day. Maybe that's part of it. But I did come in with a little bit of it. And I just thought, you know, I'll go over my brows. And later in the day, like fluffing them up again, getting them kind of perked up and standing up, like it really, truly did something for my look. I mean, we're talking a fully done brow. I don't know, one in the afternoon and you just go through them with some gel. It was like my face became lifted again. I don't know what the deal was. It might be something to just consider trying if you're doing any kind of touch up to go over them again. Like here, I've just gotten them kind of nicely fluffed up. I'm working them in a bit of an upward manner. I'm not like going straight up with the hairs, you know, I got kind of a thick brow to be doing that with. But yeah, think about doing that when you're touching up. I was so surprised at the difference that made. And now guys, I'm going to go on and do an eye look where I don't really have any tips to share. You know, like the, the eye look is what you want to do. That's why I kind of found this 
concept of this look interesting because I didn't have like a definitive tip on foundation or a super tip on eyeshadow. It's just kind of like do what you want. Just plug in these other tips and it'll all work together. Okay, you know what palette I'm gonna grab for today? I'm gonna use my You're So Hot palette from Too Faced. This was talked about in the under $30 video and it wasn't really one of my big recommendations. At the same time, I thought maybe somebody out there is interested in seeing it in action and I just kind of want a basic look today anyway. It's gonna give you basic browns, all right? So I'm using this shade and I'm popping that in the crease. Again, do what you want. Go with a barely there eye and just some liner mascara. Do something bold and smoky. It's not really a make or break key to the look as far as this look goes and these other tips that I'm sharing. But I'm just swiping that crease shade back and forth, letting it come up, letting it diffuse. I was so proud of, of Belle the other day. She got, I'm taking this matte cream, it's matte. She got what they call a positive office referral the other day and they read it on the announcements. And it was so sweet from her teacher, just talking about how helpful she is and how great she is working in groups with kids, helping others without being asked. And it's just like the kind of stuff that just melts your parent heart, you know? And I was just like, that is so nice. I just really appreciated that. I, I, it was one of those moments where you feel like your child is so seen, you know? Go into this shade, this kind of rusty brown. Working that in on the outside. Nookie does have an absolute heart of gold though. I mean, she just does. She is a very empathetic person. She's a little kid full of maternal instincts is the way I've seen her for several years now. So I've got that all blended in. I used this first and then we did that matte um, just kind of as a highlight this one in the crease. Now maybe we'll go a little darker on the outer corner. It's a really easy, logical palette for me to use, you know? Go down to this dark, cool brown. As you can see with the color spread though, it's, it's pretty common for the types of things I kind of already own. But not everyone already owns all the shades, you know? And this may be a really cute stocking stu stuffer for someone, or a cute way to give it could be like Find an adorable little coffee mug, put in like some hot cocoa mix and some candy canes and some marshmallows and then pop in this little palette. That would be cute, I gotta admit. Okay, so I've got the dark shade all patted in and then I'm gonna go to this brown that's above it. And that's just kind of like our merger brown, okay? I'm using my small pointed brush from Profusion and that's kind of merging what was in the crease with what just went down on the lid. I do love a toasty neutral eye, I do. If you feel the need, bring in a bare brush, get it all blended. Then take a flat brush. I think I'm gonna go to this shade right up here. What will we call this? Like a really dusty bronze looking shade. And I'm just applying that over my whole inner lid space. Did get a little fall out there. It's got a little sheen. You do want to kind of deliberately pat it in though. Okay, then let's take just a little bit of that brown, small pointed brush, and lower lash line. Perfect, soft definition here that doesn't really look too loud and proud, you know. but it does make the look feel very finished. Again, we're not on any particular tip mode yet. I do have something related to the eyes to share in a second, but we're just gonna line here however you like to do it. If you wanna do a wing, I'm gonna do a wing today just cause I haven't done one in a while with this um, Benefit Extreme Precision Liner. It's just a little brush tip liner pen. Just trying to use what I have here. I've been using a lot of my Essence. Uh, Lash Princess Waterproof Liner Pen, which I love. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take this across the upper lash line, kick up a little wing, make sure I can still do it. I think I hear something howling outside. Is that a wolf, coyote? About one year ago at this time, my mom 
was still in the hospital having, she'd had her emergency hernia repair. Man, what a time. And then I kind of just, I always like to do this. I don't think you have to do this, but when I do a wing, I take my darkest eyeshadow available to me and an angled brush and just kind of like meet up with that wing on the outside. There's something about that that makes me feel like, okay, the eye is now done. Like I, I like just closing that gap. Anyone else? You don't have to. I think I might feel the need to do it more when I do have something going on here on the lower lash line. You know, if I was doing a solely upper part of the eye focused look with no intention of doing any lower eyeshadow or anything, then I might not do that. You know, just let the wing be a wing. But if I do have something down there, I feel like it needs to merge. It needs to come together with it. Here's the eye tip, and I've talked about it before, but it does, I think, elevate the look. It's brightening your lower inner rim with something that's bright but not too bright. I think certain shades in your lower inner rim can be a little too, like, look at me. I don't think you really want people to be immediately zeroing in on the waterline, but I think you want them to just think, wow, her eyes look vibrant and awake, you know? That's the takeaway. You don't want them to necessarily know why they're thinking that. Okay, so I love this duo liner from ABH. The shade is called Matte Camille and Sand Shimmer. And you use that matte side, which mine could stand to be sharpened, but I still get it in here anyway. And you just run that in the lower inner rim. Yes, this is an under brow highlighter product, but it's very multitasking. You can use the shimmer side to like highlight your cheeks, do whatever you want with it. Highlight the inner corner of your eye, whatever. But I find it lasts better on my waterline than a lot of things that are designed to be there. And it transfers down to the waterline better than many smaller pencils, okay? So even though it is a thick pencil, I think it's worth it. And it just brightens up and from a distance, you know, your eyes appear a little brighter, but nobody's really sure exactly why. <laughs> that's, that's the trick. I hope this video like makes sense, like what I'm getting at with some of these different little steps. They're small steps, aren't they? But they they, they do make some difference on the face. I'm going to curl my lashes and apply mascara. This is not a tip. This is just a, a thing we do. And I'm going to use Superhero today. If there ever was a tip involving mascara, it would be just make sure you get Superhero. And a great place to find deals. Sometimes I fail to mention this, but look to QVC. They'll be selling multiples of these at a discount. So if you really love this mascara and want to stock up, check qvc.com, QVC app. By the way, speaking of IT Cosmetics and QVC, are they gonna put out a beauty book this year? I have yet to see one. And I'm really seriously wondering if they just kind of like handed off the concept to Lori Geller. Because you remember one of the first things I reviewed kind of in the spirit of holiday this season was Lori Geller's fold out beauty book. I wonder if QVC said, Hey, Laura, It Cosmetics isn't doing this this year. Do you want to take the idea and run with it? I'm kind of sad because, like, I've just been reviewing those for so many years. It's called a beauty book, and I got a library of them, you know? A lot of us have bought them year after year. There was something that needed to change in the color scheme, though. Less pinks, more neutrals. If they insist on putting those lip colors in there, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, guys? More neutrals in there, just a, a more refined color scheme more mattes in the eyeshadows, more balance in the eyeshadows. I had so many things I would like to just sit down at a table and talk to them about as one who has consistently reviewed that product every year. One day, one day, it will happen. I will get to consult on the beauty book. <laughs> Throw in a mini superhero mascara with it too while you're at it. Man, I miss seeing my eye with a little bit of a wing. That's nice. I haven't done that in forever. Maybe that just elevated my look. Or maybe it's just generally speaking, seeing yourself use a technique that you haven't used in a while is gonna like catch your own eye more. I think I got a little on my lid. Oh, don't you love that trick of letting a tiny smudge dry and then scrape it away with a spoolie? We're doing a little Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower. Lasts so well. I am super duper pleased with that eye look actually. Now I got a lip tip and it's nothing super unique and many of you may be doing this already, but the use of a lip liner I do think elevates your look and even in just the cleanup capacity, okay? So for example, I've already got this lip color on, 
and it is fairly neatly applied. It was a slim stick. It was easy for me to control, and I could practically use the edge of the lipstick as a liner. But you know, for the purposes of demonstration here, grab a lip liner. This Revlon Color Stay in Nude works in more scenarios than you can even believe. And you just kind of go around and neaten up that edge. You know, if you've got a somewhat, even slightly neutral lip, this particular lip liner will work with it. It neatens up the edge. Sometimes I get a little sloppy down in here, I'll be honest with you. I'll catch myself and I'll be like, oh, that needed to be neatened up. Immediately more precise, immediately more pulled together, okay? And I call that using lip liner in cleanup mode. You could also completely line your lips first, take advantage of some great staying power by filling in your whole lips and then topping something off. But I kind of feel like at the least, at the least, go in afterward and do a little cleanup. And guys, I didn't forget about taking some powder in at the end. Now you could use your loose powder that you set your under eye with initially. You could use um, any number of hourglass powders, any kind of light brightening powder. My new love, this one from Besame, this is my, uh, they don't call it lavender or lilac, they call it violet powder. And you can take a smallish brush for this job, like a Real Technique setting brush, go into that and hit this area where the under eye meets the blushed area. And there's something about putting product here, a little bit of powder at the end, a little, a little finishing powder that just makes everything look so finished and nice. Just experiment, use what powders you have. I'm not saying you have to go out and grab that. This is a great product, but use something in that zone and just see what blurring it does for you. So there's my finished look, just implementing a variety of different small steps that I think bring your look up a notch. Um, remember it was using a corrector. I think that really does help. It makes a difference. Um, setting powder with the puff, love doing that these days. Um, the puff itself, this e.l.f. Halo Glow Puff, or you know, you could probably find others that are this very same shape. Using that with various powders has opened up my world to so many powders I didn't maybe originally think I liked that well, but I like them when I use this. Um, also setting at the end of the look a little bit. Trying to go in similar color families with the lip and the cheek. Honestly, I don't always think about that, but I'm starting to now because I feel like there's something about the end look where it's much more cohesive that way. Um, perking up the brows, especially if you're touching up, going over them again, it like gives the whole face a lift. A light but not too light lower inner rim. That can really wake up the face, especially if you're looking red or tired there. And then lip liner cleanup. A very clean edge on that lip can make such a difference. So those are my little tips. If you have any to share, please put them in the comments section and we can all learn a thing or two down there. So um, thanks for your time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.